Oh, Did you even know I existed on your first, uh, on your guys' first date? Clear solo. No, actually, that doesn't Fill me up. I'll hold you. Oh, right, because you were friends for the longest time. Do we have any milk? Milk? No. Milk? Well, yes, we do. Oh, we do? But I thought we drank it all. No, we didn't. There's not a gallon left in it. You're gonna, you're gonna eat that before yes. we have lunch? I'm very hungry. Yes, me too. I didn't eat last I didn't want some milk. Bro, I just want food. What kind of, what kind of food? We're having tacos. Nice. I don't oh, like heck yeah. Tacos for lunch. I don't like tacos. You don't like tacos? There is something personal. Yeah, I was going to say that myself. I just don't eat tacos from there. Well, here's what we're going to do. I eat cake. Do you know why you're... Do I know? I believe we did. I believe we did. I don't want to do that. Hey, isn't your name Maverick? There we go. Yes. Okay. Come back to it. 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 Come Enjoying your Spider-Man suit. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> you don't even know how to They're both flying everywhere. Oh, it's my bee. It's my bee. It's my bee. This oh, one on the floor and I don't care. You guys need to learn how to open up the dang... The bowl. Yeah. Why? Why the bottom? Brack, was this you're doing? Yes. How? He's like, I'm not even going <laughs> to... Like, how did you know that? <laughs> Okay, before we get started, <laughs> okay. let's go ahead and open up with prayer. Are we ready? Yes. Loud mouth. Seriously. Ready. Okay. Here we go. No, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. Okay. Hold on. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Okay. Get ready or I'm about to get all Pentecostal and lay some hands on you, Jack. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, Lord. No, I won't. What is Batman? Yeah. All right, Mr. Batman. Oh, okay, I can do it for him. Okay. okay. Here's here's my lovely wife. Right. And we are here to give her all the attention, especially to her shirt Sorry. that does not have a, an actual scripture verse on. No, we didn't want to tell him that because we have a thing going on next week. So be quiet, Mr. Batman. Oh, Wait, God. why is it look oh, forty five? So here's what's happening next week. Okay. Who's in Sunday school? What's happening Friday night? Don't a raffle. Know, a what? A raffle. We're having a raffle. A what? Right that's what? Lock in. Lock in. Now I know some of you are in the, the play. Well, let's say I talk to your mom, and you're going to come late. She said, and Aunt Emily, are you going to try to come late too? Um, I'm probably going to be here around ten to ten thirty. Okay. I'll probably and be here late too. If you can. Early. Yes, she, yes, she said Saturday I'm going to try my best early. to show up. But. Well, and I talked to your mom today, too. Okay. So she, she told me as well, if you can't come to the lock in, we are doing a service project Saturday morning. We're waking up early. And we're going to serve breakfast to the men at the men's Ooh. breakfast. Pancakes? Um, <laughs> you pancakes. Can we eat them? I hadn't thought about that, but we could probably do it. Well, okay. Calm down. We'll see if we can make that happen. So, yeah, we're not. That's the bad thing. Is some of you would like to stay up all night? We're not going to do that this time. Can we? I can't. Can we? I cannot stay up all night. I wanted to. Now, 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 listen. It's not that you have to go to sleep. We're not saying you have to go to sleep. You have to be quiet, though. Okay, so I can bring a TV in the place. It's either me going to sleep or me getting punched in the face by no. my girl. Or, yeah, yeah, punch. I'll keep working on that. Hey, you're not yeah. this time, and here's the thought, here's their thought process. Yeah, behind. Maybe next lock in we can do Listen, that. Guys. But this time, Listen. we are serving the men in the morning. So we are going to have a shutdown time. It'll probably be 1 30, maybe even 2. Where you can do, you need to be quiet. So bring pillows and blankets if you want pillows and blankets. I'm gonna have an air mattress, hopefully, because I don't do floors. But um, so that's why we're doing the quiet time this time. Next lock in, it might be a little bit more loose. We'll have a quiet, we'll have quiet rooms, and those of you that want to play quiet games can play quiet games someplace else. But this time, we need to take a little bit of downtime. We're having a raffle, as Alexia brought up, and the raffle is for a $25 Visa gift card. And you have to earn, do things to put your name in the pot. And we won't draw until after men's breakfast because you still can get caught, get caught. You can still earn your name in the pot through men's breakfast as well. 
So some of the things that we have thought about, you bring a friend who has never been here before. Never been here Cannot before. Cannot be somebody that's been here before. Never been here before. See, Alexi over here is crying. Oh, if you bring a friend that's never been here before, your name could go into the drawing. Okay, what if you don't have friends? Oh, Jada, you have friends. I do not have okay. friends. Let me just say that. One, but you're I almost got in a fight on Friday. That just proves Borrow I'm somebody friends. else's friend. There you go. Here's another way. We're going to be playing some team games. And the winners of the team, the winners that's on the team, all the. The winning team, all your names can go into the drawing. Get caught being done something, doing something good. Now, Mandy and I will be in charge of that. We might just come up and say, tap your shoulder and say, go put your name in the raffle. Because you got caught being doing something good. Oh, no, I got caught. Knowing I got caught. your memory verse. Uh oh. So you gotta you gotta you gotta pay attention to what your memory verse is. Knowing your memory verse and reciting it. Quote your favorite Bible Bible verse, chapter and verse. Okay? And periodically through the night, Cassie and Jim will be asking questions about what you've been doing in Sunday school, but what you've been learning in Sunday school and youth, and your name could go in the pot for that if you answer those questions correctly. Now, I didn't prep him on this, but I want to tell you why we're focusing so much on knowing the word, knowing the scripture. This is a story that Mandy and I learned yesterday. I'm going to tell the crane story. There is a crane over in Turkey. This, what's the word I'm looking for? Are you talking about like a machine crane or like a bird? No, it's a bird, bird crane. It's a bird okay. crane. Indigenous. It's indigenous to indigenous. Turkey. Yeah. Indi okay, it's a turkey. But when they are young and flying, they make this horrible screeching sound. Why they fly? Okay. However, that screeching sound attracts bald eagles. The bald eagles like to eat these cranes. As the crane matures, he knows he can't make that noise when he's flying. But he knows he, 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 it will automatically come out. So he picks up a rock and puts it in his beak and he flies and does not make that screeching sound. So what the rock to you is, and the reason why we're focusing on the word, that is your rock. Because when the time comes, like David said, you're going to need to know the word, and it needs to be here so you can fight your battles. But I, we just thought that crane story was so interesting on how God created it that way, number one, mm -hmm. and how it relates to what we want in your mouth mm -hmm. is the word. just proves that bald eagles devour all. <laughs> well, it does, it does prove that, but think about that. Think about how, okay. what, what could have evolved... That kind of behavior, that kind of behavior doesn't evolve. That's a, a, a not. It's a, it, it's a learned, it's, it's and actually, it, it's it inbred it's into them, right. and they, they do that every they single do it generation. From birth. They're they're not taught that. They're not taught that by their parents. It's instinctual knowledge. I have one more announcement. Go ahead. Next Sunday, uh, what Jen's been talking in Sunday school. I'm talking Sunday school today about Passover. Next Sunday for your youth message. And we want you to invite parents or friends if you want. We'll be invite out everybody. here. We're going to do a Passover Seder presentation on how it all points to Christ. This is all done and started in the Old Testament. But how it points to Christ. And Passover is what the Jews do. And they don't know that how much of it points to Christ. So it's a real interesting um, thing to listen to. And to hear, you'll also be able to taste some of the things that they did or that they ate. And then afterwards, we'll have pizza for everybody. Because what you're going to taste isn't very good. Yeah. <laughs> but we'll have pizza for everybody. Okay. So invite your pizza. Um, well, hey, this, you're not going to make me eat a whole pool of spoon of horseradish, are you? Time, we'll be out here having that presentation. No, we're not going to be eating horseradish. Although, if you want to try and taste we are it, gonna you can. we're going to have it so you can yeah. taste it. We're not going to make you do that. You don't have to taste any of that. My dad loves that stuff, and I hate it when we go to Arby's. Well, like, you'll eat it. Jim is going to teach you why horseradish is on the plate. Mm -hmm. The other thing that is kind of disgusting, I think, is dipping the parsley in salt water. 
but you do not we will not force you to do any of that that you'll wait i thought be... salt water was poisonous no 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 you no. can rinse your mouth with salt water you can yeah it's it's just really salt water. It's salt water. Water. if you drink a, a plentiful amount of it as like if you were drinking water to be hydrated let me give you an example of salt water so of why drinks your let's water. Tell him. Oh, tell sorry. Him. let me give you an example of why they use parsley or greens and salt water because during this time, when the uh, when the nation of Israel, when the Jewish people were in slavery in Egypt, they were forced to work, and they didn't want to work. They were not; they didn't own their own bodies. They could not do anything they wanted to do. They even had to eat standing up. So, what they will do when when they do this, they remember two things with the parsley and, and the salt water. Number one, they remember that God told them to take and kill the Passover lamb, kill a lamb, and take its blood. And strike the blood using hyssop. hyssop. They use hyssop, which is looks like parsley, a small version of parsley. It's an herb. It's an herb, and you use that hyssop to strike the lintel, which is the top doorpost, and the two side doorposts. Well, think about that. What's that make a sign of? A cross. A cross. Uh -huh. So they did. They've done this for fifteen hundred years before that. Then also, when you take the parsley and you dip it in the salt water and you eat that parsley, it reminds you. That of the bitterness or the tears of slavery. Of, of, slavery. of slavery. So everything in this Jewish Seder, in this Seder meal, points to Christ. And so, they've been doing it for 1,500 years Don't tell me more because you're going to go into some of this next week. Thank you. But we invite your parents or whatever, friends or whatever, to go to the Seder and learn it is going to be interesting. I'm sorry I ran long, and I just had to tell the crane story. That's okay, That's cool. baby. Thank you very much. Your rock is the word that we are trying to instill uh, in your mouth. Go get cooking, because oh. we're gonna we're gonna oh. we're gonna be eating eat, eat pretty soon, woman. Oh, Mr. Barber, <laughs> Mr. Barber you have hey, not, you do not have your trump card anymore. Oh, snap! I love you, honey. <laughs> You're lucky she is a nice one. I go for a slap me if I told her to do that. Lucas, will you do me a favor? No, that was a picture box. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that was a good question. She was talking about the hyssop. And you dip that, that hyssop in there after the blood. No, you don't. Uh, the, the hyssop was specifically for that one example of Passover. So we will, we will be talking about that as we move on. Okay, now that we've had our announcements, let's go ahead. I just can't help with the entire, you know. Okay, sorry. Okay, let's go ahead and start with prayer. Ready? Father God, we thank you again. Lord, we thank you for the message that David brought to us today, the message that speaks to our hearts. Father, we thank you for your word, that we can study your word and store it in our hearts. Lord, because that's what it's all about. When we study you, when we study your word and we store it in our hearts, we're able to be able to present the gospel to those people who need to hear it. Father, it emboldens us. It strengthens us. It helps us to know you in a better way. Lord, we thank you. We love you. And we praise you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said? Amen. 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 Okay. Amen. Now, what, you know, the very first thing it says, and uh, let's go ahead and everybody open up to 1 Corinthians. We've got hot chocolate. First, uh, excuse me. Yeah, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 1. Thank you. Hmm? Can you hear this? Please. A bubble. A bubble. Oh, you want a Bible. Oh. I thought he said a bowl. I thought he said a bowl. I thought he said a bowl. I said, pass me the bowl. Bowl. And you see if you speak English. There we go. Appreciate that. No, I've got you guys. Getting educated. Yeah. Hey, wait a minute. I resemble hey, that. Hey, I'm educated at Scottsburg Middle School. <laughs> Which is how. Sounds I'm, like I'm, a personal problem. Okay, here we go. Remember that newsletter. That's hilarious. First, no, no. First verse. Are we ready? Yeah, now? Right. Yeah, look. Are we ready? Here we go. Yes. Paul, called by the will of God to be an apostle of Jesus Christ, of Christ Jesus, and our brother, um, and I can't remember, Sosthenes. I, 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 oh, I said it. I said it that time. Woo. Sosthenes. To the church of God that is in Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints together with all those who who in every place call upon the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and our Lord. Now, what exactly does it mean to be an apostle? 
messenger. And are there apostles today? Yes. yes. Are there apostles today? Yes. No. no. Now, we can be a follower. There's an arrow apostle. Don't huh? There's an arrow apostle. I can't hear you. What? There's an arrow apostle, like uh, the shirt brand. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. But apostles are those who actually walked with Christ or walked with those who walked with Christ. The apostles are the ones who actually have given us our scriptures. So are there apostles today? No. But what a definition of apostle is, is one who follows, a follower of Christ. So we can be like apostles, but we can't be the strict term apostles. Uh, let's look at uh, Romans chapter 11, verse 13, because he referenced this and I you get a chance to look at it. 11, 13, I think. Romans 11, 13. Let's look at that. All right, I think I have it. Go ahead and read it if you don't mind. Now I am speaking to you Gentiles, and as much that I am an apostle to the Gentiles, I magnify my ministry. Can we keep going? Yeah, go ahead and read the, uh, the next verse. In order, in order somehow to make my fellow Jews jealous, and thus save some of them. There we go. Fourth. If their rejection means the reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance mean but life from the dead? So, I like the way this verse points to this. It points to Paul's wanting to get them jealous. Jealous about what? Jealous of. Jealous of, of the word. Because Paul, he's not just any random guy that walked up and started reading the Bible. No. He's a, he's a Pharisee of Pharisees. He's a teacher. So he knows his Bible inside and out. So he's actually using the Jewish scriptures to point these Jews who are rejecting Jesus Christ to Jesus Christ. He's using the Old Testament. Too. Yes, he is using the Old Testament. Now one of the things, and I'm not supposed to tell you this just yet, but I'm going to go ahead and allude to it just real quick. All right, do it, do it, do it. One of the things in my studies for looking at the Passover and how things work, one of the things in Hebrews chapter 10, it says everything in the book of the Bible points to Jesus Christ. And the Bible's true. So when it says everything in the Bible points to Jesus Christ, even the genealogies that to us mean nothing. If you go look at Genesis chapter 5, you look at those genealogies in there. You've got Adam and then Enoch, and then Seth, and then I don't, I don't always get them messed up, but there's like ten of them, okay? Each one of those names means something. And I'm going to go through and tell you exactly what each one of them means when we go through the full presentation. But what's really cool about those names, it spells out the gospel. It literally says, man is appointed mortal sorrows, but... The, the eternal God will come down and his death will bring them comfort or peace. That's in those names. Now, if that's in the names of the people in the very first book of the Bible, how can that be if these guys didn't even know who Jesus was? They had no, Jesus wasn't even on their radar. And that's not a coincidence. I can show you that as my appointment. Exactly. That is absolutely a divine appointment. No. So... When we look at all these different proofs from Scripture, from uh, what the, the Word of God says, we're going to be going back and looking at the history. We're going to be looking about what this means. So, once again, Paul is using Christ Jesus, Christ Jesus, Jesus Christ. What does the word Christ mean? Messiah. Messiah. It means Messiah. That's absolutely right. When we say Savior or Messiah, what, what comes to mind? What do you think of when you, when you hear Messiah, Savior? What do you think that means? Jesus. Jesus. But what does it mean? To, see, we know that that's, that's not Jesus' last name. That's a title. Someone who saves. So Someone who saves. What is it? Well, and again, they didn't have last names the way we do here today. Now, Jesus would have been uh, Jesus bar Joseph because you would have had something about your previous uh, uh, family members in your actual name. So I would have been uh, Jim bar Jim because my dad's name is also Jim. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense. My dad's name would have been Jim bar Curtis. 
So you, you would actually be able to go back and see the lineage all the way back. So that's why they do it that way. But Jesus Christ is his title. It's like president. It's like uh, principal. It's like the eternal leader of creation. But not only is he going to be uh, a leader, because he will return. And when he does return, he's going he's gonna to rule the world with, with eternal power. But it means that he is going to do something that we can't do for ourselves. Um, we talked about how uh, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours. Now, when it talks about saints, when it talks about their Lord and ours, we can have different churches that disagree with some things. You know, we can have a church like the Church of Corinth that David was talking about today. They, they weren't a super holy group of people. They were kind of corrupt, weren't they? Do you remember what they were talking about and what David was talking about today? How Corinth was having some issues. I mean, they, they were not the, the, the best church out there. But Paul is still calling them a church and both their Lord and ours. Why, why is that? How can, how can he do that if he knows that they're corrupt? If he knows that they're doing things they're not supposed to be doing? It's nothing short. What is it? Go ahead. Maybe he still like, believes that they can change. Exactly. Because he knows that grace is that being given something that we don't deserve. And that while that they are still trying to be a body of believers, they have fallen away from what the Bible calls their first love. And that's what Paul talks about in this Romans, trying to make them jealous. Their first love should be the word of God. Being in Christ. We talked about that a little bit as well. What does it mean to be in Christ? A follower. A follower? So, but if you're in Christ and you're a follower, what are you following of Christ? How do you know to be in Christ? What are you following of Christ? How do we know about Christ? From the Bible. From the Bible. So, once again, if you're in Christ, you got to be in the Word. you got to be studying the Word. you got to understand that even though this is not the easiest book to read, sometimes we read it and we just don't get it. But God's word is very clear. It says, knock and the door will be open. Seek and you will find. Because God wants you to know this kind of stuff. Um, let's see here. Why? We were talking... Oh, I'm sorry you can't find a network connection. I wasn't talking to you anyway. Okay. Um, Do you mean to big speech? Let's see here. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that was given to you in Christ Jesus, that in every way you were enriched in him in all speech and in all knowledge. Now, there's another place in the Bible where it talks about all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are hidden in Christ alone. So, when we talk about speech and knowledge, are we talking about just walking up and talking to people? Or are we talking about the speech and the knowledge that is in the Word of God? Because God's Word is perfect. And so this speech or this knowledge that we're talking about is the perfect Word of God so we can know things to be true. Even as the testimony about Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking any gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will sustain you in the end, guiltless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, by whom you were called unto the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Now, You know, when we talk about certain things, we, we use churchy words. You know, we're called. We, uh, we, we, we sometimes don't really put a, a real grip. We don't have a real grip on what that means to be called. What does it mean to be called into the fellowship of his son? What's it mean to be called by Christ like that? What do you think that means? Anybody? Maybe like there's a sign... 
think that's very something that made you feel like you needed to do that. That's one of the ways it can be a calling. It can actually be your heart can tug on you. You know, you, you have uh, something that affects you so bad uh, that you say, I, I gotta do something about that. That's your heart can do that. It, are there any ways, other ways you can be called? How about through your mind? Through the speech and knowledge, wisdom and knowledge. If you look at something, let's say you're a scientist. I was talking about this guy earlier today. I uh, can't remember his last name. His first name is John. Um, but he was an atheist. And he was a firm believer in atheism, but he was a scientist. And he went out and started studying the genetic code of us, how we are created, how that DNA and that RNA combine and they make us who we are. So this guy, this atheist, is working on genetics and he creates something called a gene gun. You literally can take this gun and insert information into the genome. Can you imagine how small that is? Can you imagine how detailed that is to be able to say, okay, I want this sequence over here and this sequence over here. That's so, very dangerous. Oh, it is very dangerous. But it's in, it's in order to help genetic problems and genetic uh, diseases. So they're not doing it just to make, just to experiment. They're actually uh, approaching this from helping people with cancer, leukemias, and things like that. Amazing work this guy is doing. So through his knowledge of looking at the genome and creating this new technology called the gene gun, he became a Christian. So you can, using your knowledge and your wisdom, you can see something that puts a call on your life. Now, he, he'll tell you straight up. I listened to his testimony. That's why I like this guy. He'll tell you straight up. He's very cold. He's very flat. He, when he talks, he talks very much like this. He doesn't really inflect back and forth. He's very cold. He'll tell you, he says, I'm not the most interesting person to listen to. He goes, but when I learned this, I had to do something with it. And so he went from being an atheist that didn't care to being a Christian that says, look, look the only way that your genes work the way they do is because a loving designer God created them to work that way. The only way you can have information in your genome to make you who you are and give you the traits that you have is because a loving designer God designed you with that information already built in. Wow. So you can be called through your heart, through your mind, and sometimes God will just lay something on your soul where you just have to do something about it because of the way you used to live. That's what happened to me. I was called out of the way I used to live because I knew it was empty. I knew it wasn't the way it was supposed to live. I knew there was something more. And I saw people who had things that I wanted. My uncle, who actually led me to Christ, he had peace, he had patience, he had joy, he had love. I had none of that stuff. I knew I wanted it. So you can be led by your desires to come into Christ as well. Because I wanted those things. It's not bad to want those things. Because God designed you to be in fellowship, not only with one another, but with him. And when you're not in fellowship with him, you'll want to try and fill that void or kill that pain in any way you can because it doesn't feel good. So I just wanted to point that out. Um, we've only got a few more minutes because we're going to try and eat and then be ready. Um, they're going to bring in a bunch of chairs. They talked about bringing in the chairs today, so we're going to stack them up over here out of the way. And then that way when we have our lock-in, they'll already be out of the way and we won't have to worry about it. Why don't we just go ahead and put them out there? Well, because they got to move the, move the uh, church pews out first. So the church pews got to come out, and they're all latched to the ground. So that takes a little bit of work. Yeah, they have to, yeah, they have to take them apart. Yeah, that's why I think it's worth I just thought I was going to read. I forgot they were screwed to the ground. That makes sense. Why are you trying to lift the pews off the ground? He made me mad. Well, and one of the other things that we were talking about, too, in, in uh, the service today was culture and how our culture kind of drives us and pushes us yeah, to be and do certain yeah. things. So our culture denies our Bible. Yeah. Our culture says, well, that's true for you, but it's not true for me. That's, it yeah. might be true for them. That's like every culture, right? Yeah. They yeah, try and be pluralistic. 
They're going to say, well, you know what? You go ahead and you have your truth. I'm not going to. I'm not going to accept that. That's not true for me. It's kind of like it's a you go. A you go you worship you your God. I'm not going to do that. But it's really all of our God. It's well, like you do you. I'll do me. Like thing. Right. But you know what? Let me ask you a question. If I say two plus two is four, and you say two plus two is five, can both of us be right? No. Yeah. Yeah. No. Only one person can be right. Two plus two. Now, wait a minute. Both of us could be wrong. If I said two plus two is five and you said two plus two is six, we both could be wrong. But not both of us can be right if we've got two different answers. Because truth by its very nature... That's why I don't like language arts. It's because you can both be right. Well, sometimes you can think you're both right, but ultimately there's a law called the law of excluded middle, and it's a law of logic. You both cannot be right, even uh, in a literary standpoint. Is it kind of like that thing you were talking, me, you were talking about, Schrodinger's cat? Very similar. It to can't that. be and dead and alive. and alive. It can only be one. Yep. But science tells us it's open. It is both alive and dead. Actually, no. It's either alive or dead. You because just don't there's know the, the outcome. There's an until, observer. You see, this is what that. What's this? What cool about quantum mechanics? The act of observing the experiment affects the outcome of the experiment. Mind blown. Wow, look at that. Yeah. But, but think about it. If Schrodinger's cat is in there, until you observe whether or not he is either alive or dead, he cannot be in both states simultaneously. Awesome. It doesn't work. Well, does the box have holes? Does, does the box have holes? It's a sealed box has a certain the amount of holes by the way. Yeah, that, that cat in the box with no so holes, like, that cat's going to die at one point. Is like, that mm -hmm. kind of be like, really sad. You spent like so long doing it and they opened it just completely. And you said something can't be at the same state or two different states at the same time. Blondes are. They're both brain dead and butt yet still oh, alive. Oh, snap. We're not going to go there. You really you are a blonde. Okay. Exactly. That's I right. know. He can, that's the only way, way he can get away with that. <laughs> but what we're talking about is a law of logic that has to be that way in the physical world. And even in Schrodinger's cat's experiment, you cannot both be alive and dead at the same time in the same way. That is That would violate the law of non-contradiction. It just doesn't work like that. And then you're but but even in, even with even wave particle physics, where you've got um, light, light can act as a particle and it can act as a wave. And the act of observing it in different formats affects how it comes out. So does that mean that it's two things simultaneously? No. What happens is it, it acts one way this way and acts another way this way. But you can predict that. If, if it was truly, guys, let's not do that, okay? Appreciate that. Uh, if it was truly in violation of the law of non-contradiction, then what would happen would be true randomness. And we don't have anything that's like that true randomness. Well, this is gambling. Gambling, well, true. But even gambling is not truly random. Nope. Because it's causally connected. You have something that causes... Let's say if you're gambling with dice. You, the person that's gambling, throws the dice. That's the weighted the dice that are stacked in <clears throat> If you're playing, if you're gambling with cards, you, the gambler, are affecting the cards and doing something. So there's a cause and effect relationship. That's not random. True randomness has no cause at all for whatever effect that you're looking at. That's why when somebody says, well, all time, space, and matter just poofed into existence, that's not, that's not logical. Because we know that everything in the physical world has a cause and effect relationship. So... All right, that was a good little tangent. Uh, a few more minutes. Well, that was a tangent. Oh, my yeah, gosh. You said a few more minutes like five minutes ago. I know. I'm just like that. Okay. That means we're going to have to go through another few minutes. Say, we did that. And then so another like, few minutes. And then another few minutes. And then until so it gets to this one. Oh, yeah. We've got a <laughs> just, just for that, I just tag on 15 more minutes. Cha ding There you go. Like three more, anyway, three more times. I will walk <laughs> out. <laughs> Pretty much. Three more yeah. stacks. Yeah. Three um, What? I wanted My to talk about two more things real quick. Grace and mercy. What's the difference between grace and mercy? Mercy is getting what you do deserve, and grace is no, what not you do not. not. No, mercy is mercy not is getting what you, what you deserve. deserve, and grace is getting what you don't deserve. Exactly. Mercy is not getting the rightful punishment that you do deserve. Oh. You know what? People have to decide Wait a minute. Uh huh. Mercy? Yeah, I just realized what your shirt was. Never mind. It's Batman. Yeah, I know it's Batman, but you it's also Batman's, Batman's face. Face. It's a paint blob. He wears Batman's 
Like every, day. every day. So I'm mercy is days. not getting the punishment you rightfully <laughs> deserve. Okay. And grace is getting so something look, you don't deserve. Exactly. So a lot of times uh, I'll ask people how you doing. They'll ask me how I'm doing. I'm saying I'm doing better than I deserve. Why do I say that? Because you don't deserve. Uh, you don't deserve to be alive. You're getting the grace of God. I don't, I don't deserve anything but eternal hell because I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner saved by the grace of Jesus Christ, our Lord. And without that mercy, and without Him coming and showing me mercy by dying on that cross for my sins, no, wait, I could not have the grace. But he, that was a, But by Him dying on the cross, that wasn't an act of mercy. That was an act of grace, wasn't it? It was an act of mercy first. Because in order to get the grace, you must first have the mercy. In order to get the grace, I see. Okay. You must have. For, you must first be forgiven before you can be given any great gifts. Because so, it's like this. Okay, I'm a liar. And I'll give you. I'll give you an example. A, a real world example. Back when I used to work for my dad when I was younger, when I was a kid, uh, and when I was not so much of a kid too, I did it. Um, I used to steal from my dad. Oh yeah, I was a good thief too. But you know what? There's no such thing as a good thief. Well, no, I, no, I was good at being a thief. He was You're right. At it. I, I was. I was, was skilled. I was skilled, was skilled at a thief. But you know what? My dad forgave me for that. He gave me mercy. Okay, that's mercy. He didn't punish me like I should have been punished. I mean, and my dad, he's a big man. He could have beat the living tar out of me, and I would have deserved it. But I did not get that punishment. What'd you steal? That's Doesn't kind of matter. ironic. I could have stolen a piece of paper. I could have stolen an ink pen. I could have stolen a paper clip. It would be irrelevant. Because okay. whatever you steal, you take something that doesn't belong to you. So whether it's a paper clip or an airplane, it doesn't matter. You stole. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. Guess what happened um, this just this past uh, week? My cousin, my cousin, she stole from the PX on base. Yes. Chairs are here already. Oh, okay. Well, guys, uh, let's yeah, she pray. Stole from <laughs> We're going to get started. Yeah, she stole from okay, hang on a second. Base. Let's pray real quick. Now I sit down. Yeah, for a second. We're gonna, we're gonna, yeah, we're a little, little, little bit early, and we're going to go ahead and pray. He's a semi-driver. I don't blame him. Yeah, I hear you that. Okay. Father God, we thank you again for this day. We thank you for the opportunity to be here and study your word. Lord, we thank you for this fellowship and this time of being together. Lord, uh, we just ask that you uh, be with us as we uh, do this work and, and be with us as we spread your gospel and tell people about your mercy and your grace. Lord, bless the hands who prepared this meal because when we finally get to eat, that we're going to be blessed by them as well. Thank you, Lord. It's in Jesus' holy name we pray. And everybody said? Amen. 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 Let's go get to work. Woo!